Zach Charbonnet is one of the most well-rounded backs coming out of the 2023 draft class. He has good size and strength, and his elite contact balance shows up on tape constantly. Zach plays with excellent vision and pace, and shows solid bursts when a hole appears. Running with physicality is one of his trademarks, allowing him to play through contact and get hidden yards in less than ideal situations. His size and physicality paired with outstanding receiving abilities make him unique in the passing game allowing him to step into the NFL as a three down back from day one. Though he doesn't have elite top end speed, he consistently breaks off big plays. He was fifth in the NCAA with 44 carries of 10 plus yards. Just for reference, he had more 10 plus yard runs than Bijan Robinson on 63 less carries. I should put out a disclaimer, I'm not saying Charbonnet is better than Bijan, but it should give a good reference for how many big time plays Charbonnet makes. So let's take a look at the film to see why I believe Zach Charbonnet will be a household name on Sundays. The first play I want to look at is from his junior year against Utah. Running through traffic and contact is a job requirement for an NFL running back, and Zach is more than qualified. On this play here, Zach approaches the line with a small jump cut. This allows him to do two things. First it allows him to press the hole, forcing the linebacker to commit to the hole and allowing his blocks to develop. Second, it allows him to load up as he explodes on his cut. The DN does a good job against the tight end on the backside. He closes down the gap and wraps up Charbonnet, but Charbonnet displays his strength as he pumps his legs and carries the DN another 7 yards. Looking at the tight view, we can see Zach's vision and instincts and why pressing the hole is important. The playside guard and tackle are working with the center towards the playside defensive tackle end and linebacker, while the backside guard and tackle are combo blocking up to the backside linebacker. On inside zone, Charbonnet is reading the first down lineman past the center on the playside. He gives Zach a read to bang this run in the playside A-gap, but Zach knows pre-snap that the backside guard and tackle will have a hard time reaching the linebacker based on his pre-snap alignment. Zach can't immediately cut back. If he does, the linebacker will fold back over the top of the combo block and be in position to make a play. Zach must press the front side hole so the linebacker steps up, allowing Zach to cut back. On the cutback, notice how he stays tight to the butt of the lineman. This allows him to find the small crease necessary to get positive yards. Any wider of a cutback, and he would run down the middle of the DN collapsing the hole. Zach's ability to run through contact sets him apart from his peers. He is able to get yards where others are not because he can simply power through defenders. This is backed up by his 4.2 yards after contact average. Zach is routinely able to fall forward for positive yards, and in the open field it usually takes a group of players to bring him down. Defenders have a funny habit of bouncing off Charbonnet, and he is often the one initiating contact. He knows how to keep his feet up when running through traffic, and he smoothly transitions from one move to the next to evade would-be tacklers. Take this next play for example. Zach is patient letting his blocks develop. He presses outside, forcing the linebacker to widen the hole, and setting up the pulling guard to make the block. He cuts back inside and runs through an arm tackle, immediately lowers his shoulder for the next defender, and spins off contact into a stumble drill before getting up and running through a couple players for four more yards. Charbonnet does a good job finding small creases in the line, allowing him to get past the first level of the defense. Zach really shines once he's able to get to the second and third level. Here, Charbonnet shows off his loose hips. His ability to rotate his hips allows him to quickly change direction so that defenders can't square up on him. When approaching defenders one-on-one, -on -one, he has a habit of changing angles slightly, resulting in a lot of off-balance tackle attempts. Game after game, Zach shows the ability to not only make the first man miss, he maintains balance so that second and third level players struggle to bring him down too. Once moving downhill, he is hard to stop. He does a great job being patient, setting up blocks at the line of scrimmage and downfield as well. DBs have a hard time bringing him down. You will often see half-hearted tackle attempts or attempts to punch the ball out instead of embracing contact. You can see his running style wear on a defense as the game goes on. When approaching the line, Charbonnet displays excellent vision, pace, and tempo. There's a lot of backs that will get the ball and run at one speed, a thousand miles an hour. But Zach understands the nuances when finding and creating holes for himself. He doesn't run up the back of his pullers, instead he gives him space to operate. He doesn't immediately dart at the first available hole, rather he uses his movement to influence defenders one way so that he can create a cutback window. His pace allows him to stay under control so that he can plant his foot and get upfield quickly. Zach runs through a lot of arm tackles by defenders that over-pursue. 
And while he doesn't have the top end speed necessary to beat angles like fellow draft prospect Jameer Gibbs, he has plenty of bursts to explode through holes before they close or capture the edge if the opportunity presents itself. Though he won't outrace the fastest defenders, his vision, tempo, and quick bursts combined with his size, strength, and contact balance allows him to break off long runs. Zach has powerful jump cuts as well. Though his jump cuts are not as springy as someone like Bijan Robinson, they are strong and allow him to explode on cuts to create long gains, run through arm tackles, or to get himself out of trouble. Here, he is trying to press the whole front side, but he sees color flash across his face so he loads up and jump cuts backside. He frequently does a good job staying squared to the line, and only uses his jump cuts to travel the appropriate distance necessary. Here, if he cut too far back, he would have cut right into the backside defender. Instead, he cuts back tight off the hip of the tight end, forcing an arm tackle that he can easily run through. Again, he shows why you only need to cut as much as necessary. This tight cut allows Sharps the ability to get upfield without running directly into the waiting fold player. It seems trivial, but many running backs will make too big of a jump cut and either run into a waiting defender or have to outrace them to the edge. While Charbonnet is a strong runner, you cannot overlook how good he is as a receiver. He will be a true three down back because of his ability to impact the passing game. We've already seen how well Zach is able to break tackles and carry defenders when running the ball in traffic. It's damn near impossible to get him on the ground in one-on-one -on -one situations in open space, especially when it's safeties and corners trying to bring him down. Charbonnet has natural hands and good body control, and consistently shows the ability to catch through contact. He routinely makes catches away from his body, whether the ball is thrown overhead, in front of him, or behind him. He quickly makes adjustments so he can catch off target balls while putting himself in a position to tuck and run instantly. This catch against USC is a great example. The ball is thrown above his head, but he is able to jump, catch, and turn his body in the air to land with a solid base, allowing him to take off in either direction right away. Again, against Stanford, he shows the ability to high point the ball and immediately get in position to do Zach Charbonnet things. Zach's best ability is making defenders miss and running through contact. Getting him the ball in open space allows him to show off his playmaking ability. Zach doesn't just catch swing routes on the sideline. UCLA found creative ways to get Zach the ball in space. While his route running will take some work, as you can see on this choice route here, any team that drafts Zach and doesn't find ways to include him in the passing game will be wasting his talents. He will be a great addition for any quarterback, as they will have a reliable safety valve underneath that can turn checkdowns into first downs. When comparing his pass blocking to typical rookie running backs, he has a leg up. His size and physicality lends themselves well to being able to step up in protection. He's not afraid to bring the fight to oncoming rushers, whether they're DBs, linebackers, or linemen. And he also shows the ability to mirror and redirect while getting his hands inside. Still, Zach is not a perfect pass blocker. He will get better with reps, but UCLA didn't ask him to pass block all that much. I mean, most of the Bruins' offense was running the ball, faking the ball, or passing to him. He has all the tools necessary to be a top pass blocking running back in the NFL. It is important to be aware of any player weaknesses or shortcomings. Zach has them as well. As previously mentioned, Zach doesn't have elite top end speed. He consistently gets to the open field, but he's not able to find the gear necessary to outrace the fastest players. Many of his doubles would turn into home runs if he had the juice of players like Saquon Barkley and Jonathan Taylor. He is still able to make big plays because he is hard to bring down one-on-one, -on -one, but there are times that defenders are able to chase him down and angle him out of bounds. Having said that, is high level long speed necessary to be a top running back in the NFL? The average 40 time for the running backs in the top 10 in rushing yards in 2022 was 4.49, with several high 4.5 guys in there. The average 40 time for the running backs in the top 10 in breakaway run percent, that is rushes of more than 15 yards, was 4.50, with several players in the high 4.5 or low 4.6 range. Zach Charbonnet ran a 4.53. There are plenty of highly productive running backs that didn't run 4.3s and 4.4s. There is so much more to being successful as a running back than straight line speed. Moving on, Zach also struggles making sharp cuts when running with a head of steam. When running outside zone, if he's not running under control, he has a habit of pattering his feet to get upfield. This slows down his cuts and allows the defense to recover. You can see this again against Cal, although here he is still able to be shifty enough to elude a tackler. I think this is the reason UCLA ran more mid zone than outside zone, as it allowed Zach to play with better pace and angles to make explosive cuts. 
Charbonnet can get in trouble trying to bounce runs as well. There are several examples on tape where he makes a cut and tries to beat a pursuing defender to the edge instead of getting vertical immediately. This play against Stanford is a good example of that. He does a good job on the initial jump cut as the defender chases backside, but instead of getting vertical and gaining ground, he bounces outside and gets caught. Here's another example against Cal. He does a tremendous job pressing the hole, getting to the heels of the lineman before cutting. But again, he tries to bounce a run when he would have had more success getting vertical immediately. You will need to understand his athletic limitations in the NFL, as he will not make his money bouncing runs to the outside too often. I don't think any of his weaknesses are fatal flaws. They are limitations on what separates him from being included when discussing elite running back prospects. But those limitations can be mitigated by coaches running plays that suit his running ability, and by Zach understanding how he has to play to maximize his strengths. Overall, Zach's strengths far outweigh his weaknesses, and he has a valuable skill set that will allow him to thrive as a workhorse back right away. Last, since this is an Eagles focused channel, I want to look at what Zach Charbonnet can potentially bring to this Eagles offense. When looking at this Eagles offense, it is very much predicated on the run game. Their offense is built around design runs, RPOs, and play action. The run game is diverse, using multiple different gap and zone schemes, and a breakdown of the Eagles rushing attack isn't complete without mentioning how Jalen Hurts is able to open up run lanes by occupying defenders based on the threat of his legs. Jalen's legs, combined with the Eagles RPO game and vaunted offensive line, create an environment that is extremely friendly for running backs. In 2022, the Eagles offense averaged 3.3 rushing yards before contact per attempt, the fifth best mark in the league. However, the Eagles running backs averaged 2.4 yards after contact, tied for 25th. Even though Miles Sanders rushed for over 1,200 yards last year, you can argue that he could have had more. Miles averaged 2.5 yards after contact, 25th out of 42 running backs over 100 attempts. While he was 16th out of 42 in broken and missed tackles forced per attempt, he was only 26th out of 42 in breakaway run percent. Kenneth Gainwell didn't qualify for the list, carrying the ball only 53 times last year. But as you can see on the screen, his metrics were considerably worse than Miles. When watching the film, you can see the stats back this up. There's too often that the running backs would take what was blocked, but not get much more once they had to make a man miss or run through contact. Forward movement from piles was rare, and little yards were gained once defenders got their hands on Eagles running backs. A back like Charbonnet that excels breaking tackles, being shifty enough to make guys miss, and getting yards after contact will thrive in this Philadelphia Eagles offense. This Eagles scheme and line will open up plenty of holes, they just need backs that can create yards beyond the first level. For as much star power as the Eagles have in the wide receiver and tight end room, this is still a run first offense, and a back that can consistently turn 3-4 to four yard runs into 7-8 to eight yard gains is what this offense needs to take the next step. With all things considered, Zach Charbonnet has the size, physicality, toughness, and skills to be that back. I hope you enjoyed this episode of the Philly Film Room. If you liked what you saw, please subscribe and give a thumbs up. Be sure to stay tuned as I keep dropping more player evaluations before the draft.